I'm Edward Swaim, Executive Director of the Biomeda Water Management District in East Central Arkansas. If you recognize the crop in this picture, you know that I'm about to talk about water. This is rice, and Arkansas grows half of the rice produced in the United States. It takes about three feet of water to raise a rice crop. Arkansas is not all the same. In the north and west, we have mountains. In the southern part of the state, we have trees. And in East Arkansas, where it's flat, that's where we grow our row crops and we irrigate. Our water data is gathered by a team of private water users, local, state, and federal agencies, then analyzed to support good decisions. Crops use 80% of our water, thermoelectric power 11%, and public drinking water 3.5%. On this chart, we're ranked third in agricultural land in the nation, so it's no surprise irrigation is our number one use. Beginning with USGS's first well measurements in about 1927, Arkansas has probably built the best set of water information in any southeastern state. Our four big crops are rice, soybeans, corn, and cotton. Rice has been grown here commercially since the early 1900s. Rice takes on average three feet of water to grow. Many farmers are growing on less water, and that's the type of conservation that we'll need for long-term water sustainability. The USGS rankings in its 2015 water use report have Arkansas in the top five of total withdrawals and number two behind California in groundwater withdrawals nationally. 92.5 million acre feet of water runs across Arkansas in an average year, but we only satisfy 16% of our demand from the surface. The remaining 84% is from the ground. Our alluvial aquifer just below our feet is our most prolific source, supplying 96% of that groundwater. Ground and surface water withdrawals are reported annually. Most are not metered, but are estimates based on tables developed by state and federal agencies. Refining the numbers further is always a work in progress, but we know that groundwater storage has been going down for over 100 years, what storage remains, and what our current and projected withdrawals will be. We have a huge demand and supply gap. Brian Clark, one of our hosts, made this illustration. It shows the MIRAS model in action for East Arkansas and some of the surrounding states that share the alluvial aquifer around the Mississippi River. The lesson from this illustration is that if we don't change our water use patterns, we will run out of groundwater. So here's how we're responding to what we know about groundwater and water use. We're building a project to clean out bows and ditches to reduce flood damage, add to and enhance wildlife habitat, especially for ducks, and deliver enough surface water to farms to reduce groundwater use to sustainable levels. And this is our pumping station at Scott, Arkansas on the Arkansas River. Our project and its companion to the east will take river water, Arkansas River water for Biomeda, and White River water for Grand Prairie and distribute it to farms. The little purple area to the left is the Plum Bio Irrigation Project that has operated for 30 years, taking Arkansas River water and distributing it to about 14,000 acres. It's a huge success. Our project will work by taking water out of the Arkansas River, pumping it into canals and bios, and moving it to farms with pipelines. When we get to the lower end of the system, we have a huge wildlife management area that has standing water on it too far into the spring. So we have a pump station at the bottom end that will push some of that excess water back into the Arkansas River. In a few years, when we begin to deliver water, we'll depend on data for day-to-day -day operations from stream gauging to metering of demand and then also measurements of groundwater response to make sure that we're having a positive effect on groundwater. If we pay attention to the data, we can adapt and continue to produce the commodities that are the base of our state's economy. 
If we ignore it or look for anecdotal confirmation of bad habits, then we're in trouble. Our first successful irrigation project, the Plum Bio Project, took data on water availability, groundwater shortages, and good old-fashioned elevations from topo maps to determine that water could be taken from the river, pushed over a weir, and moved into a system that could water 14,000 acres. The farm in this picture gets its water from the Plum Bio Irrigation Project and it will never run out of water.